Good afternoon, how are you? Well, it's warm out, it's nice, it's beautiful here in the trees. Uh, there's even a slight breeze. Talking about a breeze, there is a wind that's out there that sort of apologizes for the Justice Department and separates, mm -hmm. forgive me if I repeat myself a little bit, and separates our interest in what happened from Oh, a prosecution for the crimes that is as terrible as the information we're getting from the committee? These two things are not separate. They are one and the same. And I, and from what I can glean from uh, others, and not just prosecutors, former prosecutors, is they see a wealth of evidence to go forward. And not just with yesterday's. We, we have had... Uh, well, we've had revelations, even as we live through them, and we have more every day, giving us more and more detail. And, you know, if you were to just squint, you would say, well, who's in this conspiracy? Well, Trump, of course, Meadows, Rudy, Eastman. Uh, how about Stone, Flynn, Bannon? There, you, you know, you, any one of us can put together the list. What evidence do we have? Oh, we got tapes in Georgia. We got people who were in the room who observed it. We got people at the Justice Department that are present when Trump is trying to manipulate the Justice Department. So how do we put this all together? What is it? Well, it's a conspiracy with several means to achieve one end, which is to overturn in violation of the Constitution and law, say seditious conspiracy, for example, and... Um, to be instated as reinstated if you will as the president though i lost the election now wouldn't that be cool huh that's how trump must have thought about it and you know i'm going to set up this situation in which we're going to get phony electors and we're going to just push it and if you had any doubt about what trump wanted to do on january the on the, yes january the 6th all you have to do is think about him saying, eh, you don't have to check their guns. They don't want to get me. <laughs> and I'm going with them. You know, I don't know if he saw himself as a perverse Teddy Roosevelt in his huge black car, which he was going to seize from the Secret Service and drive up there and then lead them against Vice President uh, Pence. So... It's a pretty amazing situation that we have, that we have this kind of evidence. But equal amazing, equally amazing are these people who say, oh, you know, it could be this, it could be that, it could be the other thing. And the, the error of some people who are just not competent to figure out what happened is that they narrow in so closely to a situation, they ignore the context. Or they look at an overall situation and believe nobody could do this. They come with a presumption, even though the facts contradict that. We certainly had that problem with Barr. Oh, he's a great lawyer. Yeah, he was a mouthpiece for Trump until Trump even did something he couldn't stomach and he left. So all of what I'm saying in this meandering way, is there a conspiracy charge to be made here? There are smaller cases to be made if a prosecutor wants to be really safe, you know, like the taping out of Georgia or uh, <laughs> some of the things that Trump has done, which is so also visible. And we have to do it. We have to do it now. And don't tell me that, oh, there's an election coming. Trump is not up in the election. And people who have decided to be on the side of the lie deserve to reap the whirlwind on election day. This is an election issue because it's about the very foundation of our government. Are we a democracy or does mob rule? Can witnesses be coerced and scared to death and forced to withhold from the people by the Congress or by prosecutions the truth and the whole truth for fear that they or a family member will be hurt? The absence from the field of the Justice Department and prosecutors up and down the East Coast is one of the primary reasons that our country is in danger. We have to end that, and we have to do it immediately. And you have to write and talk to every member 
of that committee, January 6th committee, and tell them to forget this nonsense about, oh, we're gentlemanly going to ignore the recommendations that include a prosecution. Well, do it. Not that. Complain. Say specifically what you think the crimes are. We have some of the brightest minds in the nation elected in elected office on this committee. And we're going to waste it and not say what should really happen here? I suppose that when they investigated the Kennedy assassination and they decided that it was going to be a sole shooter who is now dead, that eliminated for them the need to identify who really else was involved. In this case, there's no mystery. We've seen it. We know that there are a number of people involved. We know they've done terrible things. We know people died on the Hill. And we cannot put this aside, not for all the men and women that trust America to protect them, to preserve and protect the Constitution, to stand for the values that establish this nation. And if we don't have that, we have nothing. We won't have the respect of other world leaders. We won't have the respect of the people. And we will have the kind of chaos that foments violence because it will be unpredictable. It will be by whim and by force and by gun. It will be by lie and deceit. And we can't have that. We're all taught to be everything else but that. There cannot be exceptions to this in our public life. So that's what I got to say. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow if I'm around. Bye-bye.